Open the world where the mysteries are revealed, what you have never imagined. Throughout the long patch history of the Animal Server, there have been builds that, despite being deleted from the game, are still remembered by players for their once dominant power. And today, a true legend has officially made its comeback. It's not the mammoth. It's not the saber tooth either. It's the dire wolf, the ancient war god, the party's main tank, and the heavy duty DPS of the Pleistocene meta. If you think you've mastered the natural meta, I'm sorry to say, you're still stuck in bronze. After 12,500 years of being AFK from the meta, the dire wolf has just been summoned back to the server by scientists using gene editing technology. The question is, if this build makes a comeback, will it still be viable in today's meta? Or will it be like a classic character that's out of the meta, unable to compete with newer builds like the gray wolf, the leopard, or even humans? Let's open the stat tab, analyze the skills, and see if the dire wolf main is worth picking again. First, let's take a look at the dire wolf's base stats. And a warning ahead, this build is not for solo play or guerrilla tactics. It's a build designed to dominate through sheer power and team tactics. In terms of raw stats, the Dire Wolf might easily make players think it's a direct upgrade of the Grey Wolf, and in some ways that's not wrong. It's bigger, stronger, and in a direct strength matchup, the Grey Wolf stands almost no chance. But if you've ever played a PvP game, you'll know that base stats aren't everything. Sometimes what really decides the win or loss is the skill mechanics, speed, and the ability to outplay your opponent. With a bite force of up to 1,500 PSI, the Dire Wolf even surpasses the African Lion in terms of armor-piercing bite power. In ancient PvE encounters, this build was the nightmare of the giant ground sloth, the ancient bison, and even the Ice Age wild horses. Targets with high HP but weak defense. The saddest part is, if you pit the Dire Wolf in a solo battle against a modern, try-hard coyote build, the surprising result is, the Coyote could win using a Kite plus Bait plus Speed Abuse strategy. The Coyote's build is the perfect example of meta optimization. Lightweight, highly mobile, not afraid of solo farming, and capable of surviving well in both wild and urban environments. The Dire Wolf isn't just bigger than the Gray Wolf. It's almost on par with smaller big cats like the Leopard, but with a stockier build. It has thick calves, broad shoulders, and a short but extremely dense skull. The dire wolf may look like an oversized gray wolf, but that's not the case. In terms of appearance, the dire wolf is thicker, heavier, and more muscular at every critical point, especially the shoulders, neck, and skull. While the gray wolf builds for mobile guerrilla tactics, the dire wolf prefers to face check every combat with sheer physical strength. The dire wolf's skull isn't just larger, it's designed to withstand greater force and generate a higher bite force. With large teeth, thick fangs, and a bite force nearly four times that of the gray wolf, the dire wolf can pierce through thick bones and even snap the thigh bones of a small bison with just a few bites. Look at the shoulders and front legs. These aren't legs built for sprinting. They're built to pin down enemies and crush them with weight. Unlike modern dogs, which have builds focused on speed, the dire wolf has a short leg, long body ratio. This makes it a low slung bulldozer in terms of raw power. Compared to the gray wolf, which relies on teamwork to take down large prey, the dire wolf can easily solo a target with just two to three well-placed bite combos. In terms of appearance, the gray wolf is the optimal build for the modern meta, fast, agile, and good at spreading attacks. But the dire wolf? This is a build that's been fully buffed in STR, ATK, and HP, designed to handle massive prey like bison, wild horses, and even the giant deer of the Pleistocene, targets that the gray wolf would need to call in backup to even approach. If the modern meta is a battle of speed, the dire wolf is a creature from the brutal PvE era, where the strong survive, and even the fast can still die. If the jaws are the weapon, then the eyes and ears are the radar. And in the wild meta, where every combat is a matter of life and death, detecting a target just 0.5 seconds earlier can make the difference between life and death. The dire wolf understands this and has invested heavily in it. 
In terms of eye structure, the dire wolf is built for tracking movement in low light, similar to the gray wolf. However, due to its larger head and wider eye sockets, it can maintain focus longer when tracking a moving target. This makes it extremely dangerous for ambushes during dusk or late at night, times when prey is usually more vulnerable. The dire wolf's ears are large, upright, and its muscular neck allows it to pivot its head to pinpoint sound accurately, even at long distances or in noisy environments. This ability helps the dire wolf excel at sound filtering and selecting truly valuable targets. Compared to the gray wolf, which has sharper ears and slightly better sensitivity, the dire wolf sacrifices some of that sensitivity in exchange for durability and resistance to noise interference. In environments like snowy forests, where echoes can distort perception, the dire wolf is less likely to fall for sound traps. Not only does the dire wolf gather sound and visual information, but it also has an incredibly fast nervous response to combine them into a dynamic combat map. A rustling leaf, a shadow glides by, a slight shift in the wind's direction, and immediately the dire wolf sketches out the entire upcoming combat. The player not only knows where the prey is, but can also predict where it will run and where the killing blow will land. Dire wolf players don't play for quick victories. They listen more, observe deeper, and only strike when they're certain. In the wild meta, where one mistake can cost you permanent HP, this play style is incredibly cold-blooded, ruthless, and effective. Although it doesn't have retractable claws like characters from the cat class, the dire wolf still knows how to use its claws to control the battle. The dire wolf has large, thick, and incredibly sturdy claws. These aren't claws meant for causing bleed like a leopard or lion. These are claws designed to anchor into the ground, block escape routes, and redirect the target's evasion path. When the dire wolf charges at its target, it often locks down the target's movement with the pressure from its front legs, then delivers a bone crusher bite. At this point, the claws aren't just for holding, they're used to tear at weak points, like the knee ligaments or hips, rendering the prey almost unable to react. Dire wolf players don't play the flashy attack game. They lock the opponent into the map, keep you pinned down, and let the terror of 70 kilograms of muscle and brutal jaws finish the job. Why did scientists choose to resurrect the dire wolf instead of the saber-tooth, mammoth, or megatherium? In the repository of extinct creatures, there have been hundreds of legendary builds proposed. So why did scientists choose the dire wolf, a cold-blooded bruiser, to bring back onto Earth's map? Because of its adaptability and the absence of a true apex predator. Unlike many other ancient species, the dire wolf left behind a relatively complete DNA sample. Resurrecting the dire wolf isn't random. It's a strategy to reset the modern ecosystem using a balanced build, violent yet controllable. Unlike the mammoth, slow and mana draining, not like the saber tooth, easily outclassed by the new patch. The dire wolf is one of the rare ancient builds that still fits into the 2025 meta. And now as it returns to the server, the only question is, is the modern world tough enough to withstand the pressure of an ancient class that dominated the wilds 12,500 years ago? And if you think it can't get scarier than this, don't worry. The next episode will ruin your sleep.